Now, in a previous video, we went over how to create your first MIDI song in Reaper. As a review, this is what it sounded like with some drums, piano, a melody, and some strings. And in that video, I showed you a feature right over here to automatically record arm our tracks when they're selected. Notice the record button looks different. It normally looks like this. But if we right click the button, we can turn on that feature right here. Automatically record arm when track selected. And this is off by default. When we turn it on, we can just select our track and that track goes into record. Select a different track. That track comes out of record and this track goes into record, making it a lot easier or quicker to switch our tracks for this type of workflow. So if I wanna to jump to my drums, just select it, and I can start recording my drums, or my piano, my melody, or my strings. But there is one downside to doing it this way, is if we're using the virtual MIDI keyboard to trigger our sounds, using our computer keyboard, or USB MIDI keyboard, like the one I'm using, with only a two octave range, we might not be in that range when we switch our tracks. So if we switch them like this, or we use the keyboard shortcut, Alt Control up and down on PC, or Option Command up and down on Mac, we can go up and down, but we might be in the wrong octave. Like for my drums down here, let's say I'm using the virtual MIDI keyboard, I could hit Z, X, and C, or S and D, But that just gives me the higher notes. We can use the arrow keys to go down an octave. And now I can play my kick, snare, and hi-hat correctly. But if I switch to my electric piano, now my keys play a much lower note. I want to be higher. So I have to hit the arrow keys to go up to be in the correct octave. And it's the same on my USB MIDI keyboard. If I play it now, it plays the right notes, but if I switch to the drums, I can't play those lower notes. I have to hit the octave button on my USB MIDI keyboard to go down to trigger those notes. And the same if we jump up to the melody track, either by clicking on it or using that keyboard shortcut, now I'm still in the wrong octave. I wanna be two octaves up. So I could do that with the octave button on my USB keyboard, hitting it twice, or if I'm using the virtual MIDI keyboard, I could arrow up twice. But again, it starts out in the wrong octave. Or if I go up to my strings, play it on my USB keyboard, it's an octave too low. Or if I do it over here, it's also too low. So I could arrow up. Or octave up on my USB MIDI keyboard, but I have to do that every time. So it defeats the purpose of doing it over here. And I also created using a keyboard shortcut. If I type into the actions menu, go to track, there's an action right here that'll go to track using a knob on my MIDI keyboard. Let's delete this one and add it again by moving that knob. Now I could use that knob on my MIDI keyboard to switch between my tracks. Again, go to my drums, but I'm in the wrong octave. So I have to hit that octave key a few times just to get back. I'll move it up to my piano. I'm in the wrong octave. I have to hit 
the octave button again to get to the right octave. So as you can see, it kind of defeats the purpose of having this feature, as you have to do two different things each time. But we can fix that by using a transpose plugin on the input effects of each track. Let's start with our piano. Let's arrow down to C3. And let's say this is a good starting point or home base. As it works well with the piano, but not with the other tracks. Then we'll switch to this track, go to the input effects on this track, not the normal track effects, but the input ones, which will print or record any plugin we put on this track. Click it, type into the filter transpose, and we can choose this plugin right here. Double click it, shows up right here, and we can transpose our MIDI input right from this plugin. And for drums, let's bring it down an octave, which we could do from here. We'll just type in minus 12. And now if I play my MIDI keyboard, it's set up perfectly for my drums. Or if I do it with my virtual MIDI keyboard, it's perfect as well. But notice we see two notes down here in the virtual MIDI keyboard, letting us know which note we're playing and which note is being triggered. But we're only triggering one note. So now we could switch between these two different sounds and always be in the right octave. Let's do the same for the melody. Again, it's two octaves off. Let's right click this button, go to recently used and choose transport notes. And for this one, we'll bring it up 12 notes. Close it. Now if I play this melody track, it's in the right octave. And again, down here. And again, we see two notes at the same time. One for the input and one for the note that's being triggered. Let's do the same for the strings. Select it, right click this button, recently used, MIDI transport notes. And for this one, we'll bring it up 24 notes or two octaves. Close it. Now if we play my strings using the MIDI keyboard, it's in the correct octave. And if we do it down here as well, it's also in the correct octave. So you can quickly switch using the keyboard shortcuts to choose our tracks and trigger them with the virtual MIDI keyboard or my MIDI keyboard. Jump up a track, move to the piano, my melody, or the strings. Again, it'll work with our USB MIDI keyboard or the virtual MIDI keyboard down here using our computer keyboard. It's just a nice time saver when we use this feature over here, automatic record arm when track selected. So you only have to do one thing at a time. Either select the track, use a keyboard shortcut, or use the knob on a USB MIDI keyboard to switch to different tracks like that. And always be in the correct octave each time. So that's pretty much it. That's transposing on input on a track by track basis in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.
Bye.